A misty hush hangs over a great city at sunrise. A new day is silently moving westward. Most of America is still asleep. Five o'clock in New York, 4 a.m. in Chicago, 3 o'clock in Denver, 2 in San Francisco. But behind the quiet canyon streets, the wheels of our swift-moving civilization are turning. They never stop their endless turning. Day and night, the flow of goods and commodities must go on. Night and day, for this is the bloodstream of our national life. From 30 miles away, from across the river, from 100 miles in the valley, from the railroad yards, from the docks, from 200 miles across the mountains, 300 miles, 500 miles, from the Middle West, the South and the North, singing wheels that serve America, goods and commodities from all over America. For the city must live, the city must eat and be clothed, must work and play, and great, unending, infinitely varied are the needs of the city. The city takes, but the city also has much to give in return. A set of dishes for the farmer's wife, machine tools for a garage in the valley, magazines and rayon panties, washing machines and candy, tractor parts and fancy shoes, teething rings and cameras, singing wheels that serve America, a vital free enterprise at work, a great industry working to keep those wheels turning, an industry that speaks its own language. Hike the bottom, Come on, hike. Heave the anchor on that double bottom. Push him up, monkey. Let's roll. Roll, freight. Move it out. Button her up. Here's a hot one. Boss the rest. Okay, hot shot. Put her to bed. Okay, take it away. We roll on the singing wheels that serve America. A tremendous, fast exchange of goods and commodities, rolling on purposeful wheels. 30 miles away, 100 miles across the mountains, most of America is still asleep, but the trucks are rolling. All day they roll, and all night. America can't wait. You want what you want when you want it. So the trucks are rolling. and rushed to the city, sealed and delivered and ready for breakfast. Fuel for your engines, your cars and your factories. Up from the sawmill, lumber for houses, girders for buildings, bridges and railroads, hay feed and grain for cattle and horses, ham on the hoof and eggs by the million. Furniture and breakfast food, circus tents and peanuts, garden truck and radio, silk socks and concrete. Things to eat and things to wear. Things you want for work and play. Modern America won't wait. You want these things today. Upon the unfailing service of singing wheels is built the highest standard of living ever seen by the human race. Even in the large cities served by steel rails and waterways, trucks form the final, most important link 
in the vital distribution of goods and commodities. And more than 48,000 towns, cities, and villages in this country are totally dependent upon trucks for all the necessities of life. Because the trucks keep rolling, we are inclined to take them for granted, forget the service they give. But just suppose that for some malevolent reason in every city, town, and village all across the nation, suppose the trucks miraculously disappear. And the end is a ghost city, a dead land, a nightmare of desolation. But of course, it's just a bad dream because no force can stop progress. The trucks won't stop. America isn't going to stop. Here they come. All day and all night, the trucks are rolling. many are four million people. This is just a handful, of course, just a few thousands. Perhaps you can visualize a hundred thousand people at a football game or some other great assembly. But four million. Try to imagine an army greater than the entire population of the city of Chicago. If you can, you'll have some appreciation of the number of wage earners who make their living keeping the wheels turning. These, with their families, equal more than the combined population of Chicago and New York. One out of every 11 paychecks issued in the United States goes to a worker in the motor truck and allied industries to maintain their families. To make and maintain the trucks, every state contributes its treasures of raw materials. From the agricultural regions, corn and cotton, flax and soybeans. From the forests, lumber, turpentine and rosins. From the ranges, hides and wool. From the mines, iron, copper, zinc, lead, aluminum, nickel, coal, and a score of others. Every trade, every craft, every profession is represented in the gigantic enterprise of putting America on wheels and keeping them rolling.
a half million trucks to serve America. Who owns them? Who operates them? One fourth of all motor trucks in the United States are on farms. And because the farmer has motor power to speed his products to market, you and I live better at lower cost than any other people anywhere. the large truck users are the American railroads with huge fleets to supplement their rail lines. Because of trucks, freight is collected and assembled at shipping points, and merchandise that would otherwise be congested in the terminals is quickly distributed. Better service at less cost. Now we can look at these singing wheels through new eyes and understand them better. Singing wheels, better service, better living, at lower cost to everybody. They clean our streets, deliver our parcels, speed the mail, transport our children to school, protect the trees. Trucks carry the load in every step of the interesting metamorphosis from trees to mile-long rolls of newsprint ready to feed to the presses. And the news of the day delivered to the newsstand or your own door. Some of them live a life of thrills and excitement, protecting property, adding speed and power to the long arm of law enforcement bringing swift relief in time of emergency in our complex modern civilization. Some spend their lives in back alleys, patient drudges without glamour but very necessary. On great construction projects, brawny giants move with ponderous, powerful dignity, carrying tremendous loads easily and dependably, helping to build huge bridges and dams, bringing life to once barren waste laying the foundation for some towering metropolitan skyscraper or a modest cottage. Our modern civilization depends upon the great network of highways lacing America into one great community. And trucks built the highways, the smooth ribbons of concrete, the super express motorways and the rural byways, making neighbors of cities and towns and villages once widely separated. A vast network of travel arteries for everybody's use for everybody's profit, built and maintained by the singing wheel. Summer and winter, these arteries must remain open. So again, the trucks go to work, clearing the highways. The wheels must roll, goods and commodities must go through. In building our great highways, in maintaining them and keeping them open the year round, trucks bear the burden. And in paying the cost of our vast arterial system, trucks also bear the burden far more than their share. A recent report to Congress by Honorable Joseph B. Eastman, former United States Coordinator of Transportation, now Chairman of the Interstate Commerce Commission, proved that during the period from 1921 to 1937, motor vehicles as a whole, including trucks, have more than paid their full share of all highway and street costs. This report showed that the average passenger car paid $26 annually in highway use taxes. The average light truck for hire paid $105. The average medium truck for hire paid $282. The average heavy truck for hire paid $403. The average heavy truck with trailer for hire paid $832. From other statistics, we see that motor trucks represent only about 14% of the total registration of highway users. Yet, trucks pay 27% of all motor vehicle taxes. Let's look at it another way. Today, trucks are paying $350 million annually in registration fees, fuel, and other taxes for the use of the highways a sum equivalent to all the maintenance costs of our state highways all over the nation, enough to pay for all the repairing of our vast arteries of travel from coast to coast, from Canada to Mexico in the state highway systems. And in addition, pay more than one-fifth the total expense of construction of new roads and bridges 
and the reconstruction of all roads in our state highway systems. Besides all this, and exclusive of their income and social security taxes, trucks now contribute each year upward of $200 million to the general expenses of government. Proudly they roll along, and rightly so. They pay their way and more. They comply with all the stringent local, state, and national regulations. They do their job and well. I want you to meet a good American, a gentleman of the highway, a man who knows his job and does it proudly and well, a representative of hundreds of thousands of expert truck drivers throughout the nation who have been especially qualified and trained for their vital job. So every driver trained as these men have been has had to pass a physical examination as rigid as the medical examination given for life insurance. Mentally and physically, he must be qualified to meet the exacting standards of this new industry. Proof of his continued fitness must be on file at all times at his headquarters. More than that, he must know all the safety regulations. What's the maximum number of hours you can drive? Ten. If another load was waiting, could you go right out again? No, sir, not until I've had eight hours rest. That's right. When may you pick up hitchhikers? Oh, never. Suppose there had been an accident. Somebody was hurt. Well, that's different. In case of an emergency, a flood, an earthquake, or whatever, all rules are suspended until the people or the property or whatever it is are safe. That's the law? Yes, it's in the Interstate Commerce Commission regulations. But on top of that, we've got company rules that go still further. I've got a first aid kit in my cab, and I know how to use it, too. How about individuals in trouble? You ever help them out? Sure, why not? We're all running on the same road. I help you tonight. Tomorrow night, you may help me. For instance? Well, a couple of nights ago, I was sailing along. I was pretty well ahead of the ticket, the schedule, that is, and I was taking it easy. When I see a flashlight blinking at me from the side of the road, I figured someone in trouble was flagging me down. Sure enough, down the road a ways, I find this fancy big sedan. He'd been sticking his foot in the carburetor, I guess. Driving pretty fast, that is. And straightened out a turn. Brakes weren't too good, I guess. So there he was. So I just heaved him a line and tried not to laugh at what his wife was telling him about his driving. Nothing to it. I pulled him back on the road and saved him a long walk and a long wait. And it didn't take me five minutes, but it'll be five years before he forgets what his wife told him. If she ever quits... What are the rules that regulate your driving? Well, outside of the local and state regulations, there's this, the interstate regulations. Do you know them? I better or else. Every motor carrier and his employees concerned with the transportation of persons or property by any motor vehicle shall comply with the following regulations and be conversant therewith. And you better know them, that's all. All of them? Try and catch me. How often is your truck inspected? Before and after every trip, that is, in respect to the condition of the trailer connections and things like that. And, of course, there's a regular inspection of the whole driving mechanism, steering, brakes, lights, signals, the whole shooting match. Do you have any part in that? Sure, look. After every trip, I fill out one of these reports covering everything about the handling and performance of my truck. And do you actually do it? Why not? It means easier driving for me. And does your employer pay attention to this report? Sure, it's just good business. Keep your truck in tip-top shape, you get better service out of it. Maintain schedules and save money. Spend a buck today on maintenance. Save ten bucks tomorrow on repairs. Uh, just one more question. How does the operating condition of your truck compare with that of the average passenger car you meet on the road? Well, let's just skip that one. I don't want to rub it in. There is your modern knight of the road. Proud of his job with a record of which he may well be proud. And just as these singing wheels may be depended upon to make possible for every one of us a better life, so may they be depended upon to provide the lightning mobility of defense for our national life. In the troubled world of today, our thoughts turn to national defense, because in an emergency, time and mobility are just as vital to defense as striking power. The old system of forced marches of foot troops is now as obsolete as the old-fashioned musket. The infantry that spends its energy plodding down the road has little left for fighting. Picturesque cavalry with all its jiggling equipment is thrilling to see, but not nearly fast enough to keep pace with modern tactics. 
today in a fraction of the time that once was required to get the old style division started, the new triangular divisions are moving, underway. With this new motorized efficiency, the trucks bear all the burdens. In the motorized army, everybody, everything rides. And these great carriers have unlimited cross-country ability. They service all our national defense needs, our Navy, our Army, and aircraft bases. Call it lightning war, call it anything you choose. It is really nothing more than efficient transportation, a science in which we are already expert. With half the trucks of all the world right here in the United States, and the experience of building and operating them efficiently, we can be confident that if we must motorize and mechanize our defensive power, no nation in all the world is our equal. serve America. A great industry working to keep those wheels turning. Every trade, every craft, every profession is represented in the gigantic enterprise of putting America on wheels and keeping them rolling. Keeping them rolling. Serving a greater America. Roll and trucker, keep rolling on love.